Hey everybody, I'm back. I've been traveling a bunch, so I'm back now. Can we get some more videos out? And today I want to talk about something very cool that came out. It allows you to take images and combine them, uh, kind of like a one-step LoRa, and it's very cool. And there's some really interesting things you can do with it. I think this is one of those tools we're going to be exploring for quite a few months because there's so many ways to adapt it into your workflow. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you these two images combined into another image, but we're going to do some other things with it, like we're going to throw a control net in there to help guide it. Uh, we're going to remove the control net. We're even going to remove the prompt completely. And there's some different things that you can do with this. Again, I'd love to see what you guys create with it. It's just another one of those little creative tools, and we can combine as many images as we want. Uh, but we're not using the image in a lot of them. We're using the context of them. Uh, so it's kind of like image as a prompt. Uh, so this is called an image prompt adapter, and you may have seen videos or heard about it, or IP adapters has been shortened, and that's what we're going to cover. Now, again, in my way of doing things, I like to do them a little more creatively. Uh, so we're going to walk through the basics first, but um, then we'll go off the deep end and you know take the red pill. Uh, All right, like, we're going to start out pretty easy today. We're just going to load the default. So we're just going to go over here and click load default, and there you go. And I'm going to spread this out a little bit because I don't like working this crowded. During the demos, things like this, I like to see all the nodes are spaced out. Even though it's a little ugly, I think it's easier to follow if you can actually see the lines instead of having them tucked behind things. That's right. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, let's talk about the nodes we're going to need for today. If you go on Manager here, click on Install Custom Nodes. I have mine set to installed here so you can see it. Uh, one we're going to have for today is this Comfy UI IP Adapter Plus right here. You're going to need that one. And we're actually going to also use this Comfy UI SDXL Empty Latent um, because this saves us some time and I want to introduce it to you. And then the other one we're going to use is actually going to use some control net in here as well uh, because there's this thing can fly out of whack pretty easily and we want to control it. This is a great way to do so. Uh, this technique uh, that I'm going to show you here I think has so much potential uh, and really unique ways to approach uh, just putting into your models. So I'm going to show you a few of the things that I've discovered so far when I'd love to hear if you come up with some. I think this is one of those like groundbreaking things. Now, initially, this is going to seem like revision. And we talked about revision earlier, uh, a technique where you can kind of combine images. And it looks like that originally or initially, I should say, but it's actually more of kind of like a one image LoRa. Uh, so that's kind of how I'm talking about it or looking at it. So let's set this all up. Well, first thing we're going to do is going to erase our prompt completely. Uh, we're going to use this. And we are going to use SDXL, but we're not going to use the SDXL um, clip here. We're just going to use this just for simplicity's sake. But again, when you're working on your bigger models and your bigger projects, you know, use the all the tools that you have available. But we're not really kind of featuring a bunch of that stuff today, so I don't want to overcomplicate this diagram. Uh, but I do want to complicate it a little bit. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to type in the word latent here. If I can spell it, and it's near the bottom here. Where is it? SDXL empty latent image. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us all of the resolutions that are safe for SDXL. And what I mean by that is SDXL works at these resolutions and square, which of course, you know, our first models were square only. This has a lot more capability, especially if you work in the ones that it's safe for. So use these if you want the best possible results. So we're going to put that right in the latent there. And be done with it. I don't like my lines to, or uh, I wish my lines didn't cross here, but they do. Uh, but I don't want to, to look, I didn't want that to line up like that. That's the kind of thing that it can cause problems. So I at least want them to cross violently. If they're going to cross, we'll just do that. In fact, we'll just go nuts here. There, that looks terrible. Let's keep it like that. Yeah, this is the anti OCD today. All right. What are we here for? All right. So uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, actually inject something into the model stream here. And what we're going to inject is a pretty interesting thing. It's going to take an image and allow it to work with the prompt. And it's going to combine the image and the prompt as it goes through its step-by-step -step process. So this is a little bit different than revision. Where revision kind of used the soul of the image. This is going to use the clip model to help us figure out what's in the image as well as the image itself. Uh, so to do that, let's go ahead and load it in. So double click and type in IPA like the beer and IPA apply. We're going to grab that and bring that in. And again, like I said, it fits right in the middle of the model workflow. So just throw it right in the mirror, right in the middle there. And that's happy. We'll minimize this because we don't need to keep looking at that. All right. And we'll minimize the, the negative two because we're not going to use that either. Uh, we will put a positive in here later, but for now we're not going. Okay. So what do we do with this thing? Uh, it's, it's pretty simple. As I said, it's going to take an image and then push it into the path of the model here. And uh, we're going to get some some interesting things out the other side. So let's see what we need here. IP adapter. If you pull that out, you only have one option other than reroute here. We'll pull that up here. And you're going to see there's a bunch of models that come with it, or at least on the uh, link I'll put below for the Git. And you can see them here. We have some that say face in them. Those are obviously 
for faces, and there is not one for SDXL face at this point. Um, the face would be if you're trying to make an image that looks very similar to someone else. Now, if you don't need the face to be exact, and if it's it's close enough, then don't worry about using the face model, which is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use the face model today because these are not people that I know. Uh, they're just made up. Uh, so the face and keeping that same face throughout this is not, not my goal. Now, we are going to be using SDXL here. Uh, so you'll notice that there's a few options here. We have a, a, a B-I-T-H, and B-I-T-H is the one with more tokens, so it's a larger. And if we use this, we must use the Clip Vision model that also has V-I-T-H in the name. Now, you can use this same Clip Vision with other ones uh, that don't have V-I-T-H, but just realize if you get an error, it's because you're probably using that model here and not this one. So this is the one I grabbed here uh, off of Hugging Face, so that's the one we're going to stick with. And it's a pretty standard one. So you should already have it on your machine. If you don't, well, now you'll go grab it. All right, what are we going to do here now? We're going to load in an image. So uh, I'm just going to right click, add node, image, and we're going to load an image. And I'm going to change this one. I'm going to load this one in here. I, I've used this one before, and I really like this. This, this image is amazing to me. Like it's, there's so much going on that's fantastic. Uh, so I want to use this one. So I'm just going to drag it in here to the image. Now, right now, the weight is set to one. So we're going to get something that's kind of similar if we just run the prompt through here. In fact, let's just do that. And I'm not going to change. Well, yeah, I'll change this. I always put this up to like 30 or 35. And we'll keep this at, at Euler and normal. There's no reason to change that. But we'll change this to fixed uh, just so we stop mixing our variables around. And uh, whenever you're testing our theory on how things work, make sure you change these to fixed so you can actually understand the differences when you're fiddling with numbers what's going on. Otherwise, you're getting a random seed every time, and it's really hard to track down what's moving. So let's just queue this and see what happens. And I totally forgot to change my model. There we are. We're going to use SDXL base. All right, and you see we have a pretty similar image, which is what we would expect because we did nothing except, hey, this, this image is worth 100% of your goal. Just go ahead and, and get an image that looks a lot like it. And you know what? It did it. So congratulations. You've done nothing. All right, so now let's improve it. And here, this is where it gets really cool. Let's take this image and let's load in another image. Let's load in this image here. And uh, I did a bunch of sci-fi stuff. We'll be doing a bunch of this. Um, I love sci-fi stuff, so it's always going to happen. What I want to do is I want to use these images. So there's only one input for image here. We need to batch these together. It's simple. Just drag this out and look for image batch. Put them together. And now they are one. And they go up in here. Now, this is not the same thing as merging of images, meaning they're not overlaid on top of each other. There's no blending mode or anything like that. They are simply two completely different universes uh, for what we're doing here. In fact, they're not even the same shape. So what this is going to do is it's going to look at not only the image itself, but what's in the image. And if you're doing this, don't load the same girl eight times, for example, unless she's in a different scene and you want the aspects of that scene. For example, in this scene, we really don't see anything that's sci-fi. I mean, there's some steampunk hat here, but nothing is the smooth type of hard modeling here we find on this or the thrilling headgear or the outfit. So these should be of equal weight. Again, we have not added a prompt at all at this point. And we're still sitting at one and no noise. Now noise means if we don't have any noise, it's gonna pass in basically a black image and say, don't worry about the noise part. If we add noise, we'll get a little bit more detail and a little bit more interest in the image. Uh, so we can do that, but let's do it without that first. So you can see we've only changed one variable and that is including of this image here. Let's queue it up. Okay, and now it came back and you can kind of see that we're getting the combination of the steampunk as well as the sci-fi thrilling headgear and some of the more hard surface modeling here. Uh, so it's kind of combining the spirit of them. Let's add one more. If we add this, we're going to need another batch image here. And this batch image is going to feed into this one. You're basically daisy chaining them together. Uh, let me do that a little smarter way so you can actually see what's going on here. These two over with this one. There, that probably makes a lot more sense. And that's what we're getting to. Um, I do want to move these closer, though, so we can actually see, you know, the spirit of them. But just so you know how those are connected, they're all daisy chained together. Uh, and what are we going to look for this last one? Just something that doesn't have a person in it. Look for something like flowers. Here, let's use this one. I really like that one, too. All right, so we've got three completely different images here. I think this was actually even done in Mid Journey, as I recall. I can't remember. It was a while ago. So... 
all again, all three of these, uh, it doesn't matter the order they're put in, uh, but they're all going to contribute. And they obviously have nothing in common, although the color palette of this one and the color palette of this one are similar. Uh, and we'll see what's happening. Now, if, if you got this already, hold your horses because we're going to get it more complicated here in a second. Uh, let's see what this looks like. By the way, every time you add another image in here, you are increasing the memory requirement for this. So don't go overboard, you know, add them again if they're unique and present something to the image that's unique and isn't overrepresented. So it's going to say what's the differences between these and include those items. And there we go. So we have some flowers. We have thrilling headgear. Uh, yeah, it's all working well. But what I really love is I love this pose and I want this pose. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that, but the easiest way is going to be using control net. Uh, so let's go ahead and adding some control net. So we're just typing control net and we have control net apply. We'll just use that as our point of departure here. Uh, so this obviously fits over here in the conditioning between the prompt we're not using and here. And we're not going to put one in the negative side. Um, that isn't really going to matter here. This means that the, the uh, control net is more important. So let's do the control net here. Let's roll that out. Control net loader. And I want to load in uh, the canny one. We'll load in the canny for the SDXL. Remember the different control nets are required for the different models uh, because of their, their different shapes. And then the image here, we need to pre-process whatever one we want to use. Well, I want to use this one here. And we'll grab the canny edge pre-processor. We'll put this in here and drag the image. So this will find the edges basically. And uh, let's set this to 1024 because we are using SDXL. Now, remember that we're not dragging in this, the combination of all three of these because that candy edge is going to look totally bizarre because it's going to be all three of these overlaid on top of each other. And that's not what we want. Uh, so we're just going to do this. And for strength, uh, I'll put it like down to 70%. So it's not perfect, but it should be this pose. Let's try it again. Again, we are using a locked um, seed, so we aren't going to have a totally different image. But now it's going to take that same image and lock it in with that control. There we go. So we have now our canny with the interesting pieces that we've added from these other ones. Uh, so that's working pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. All right. So what else can we do with this? Well, first of all, we're not even using the prompt and we're not using the noise. So let's do that. Let's add a prompt here. We'll choose a female astronaut and we'll, we want to drop the weight so the prompt has a chance to play because right now it's not. We'll put that down to say 70%. And let's run that without the noise first so you can kind of get the idea of what's going on here. And there we go. So it's a little bit more interesting. It's cleaned up a little bit. Uh, if we were doing this uh, a little more seriously, we in the canny part, for example, we'd stop near the end uh, to prevent a lot of those lines from leaking through. Uh, but this is coming together rather nicely. So it's adding some of the additional sci-fi detail uh, from the last one. We can give the prompt more information here and then give it more weight if we'd like. But let's add some noise in here. Let's add in, like, say, 30% noise somewhere in there and run it one more time. In fact, I'm just going to copy this over and hook this up this way. So we have a before and after. I think that's going to be an easy way to look at it. Let's get it. Ow. Now, use Control B, which is bypass. Uh, and that will allow it to continue on without this. And we can come back to it in a second. So you can see that introduction of noise allowed it to a little have a little bit more freedom as it's interpreting the image. Again, it's still using the control net to hold this pose in this face and the hat, frankly. Uh, but it's using these styles here. So if we start to eliminate these, we'll see that there's a big difference. For example, if we use this one as the canning control and get rid of this image completely, kind of rearrange our family here. Let's do this. Oops. So basically, I'm eliminating one of the images. We just have these two and we're using Kani on this one. Let's try again. Oh, we got to bypass that again. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of this since they're not side by side anymore anyway. And there we go. We have a nice combination of these two images in there along with the prompt driving the uh, sci-fi theme forward. Uh, now, the, the part of this that I think is more interesting, I mean, this is all good, and I really like this, but where I want to use this is I'm going to get rid of these, and this is kind of how I'm using it, to keep 
just this and I don't want the canny. We're not going to use any control net for this actually. Sorry if you control net fans are like, what? It's fine. We're just going to use this image as it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a texture in here and I'm going to run it at a really low weight. Well, not really low, but say 20% um, with some noise is fine. And we're going to use the same thing, but I'm going to let it render whatever it's going to render. So the sci-fi theme we saw earlier with the same seed will show up, uh, but it's going to introduce this, which will help drive the scene. So, so this will change things. I did a video, oh man, months ago on how to find scenes in textures. And this is really kind of coming to fruition here and working pretty well here. Let's see what we get. There we go. So you can see that it's using this color scheme here, which I really like. Well, I think this is a fantastic tool and there's so much we can do with it. Uh, so I would love to see what you're going to do. Again, this is one of those things I think for months we're going to be playing with it and adding it to workflows. And I'm going to toss it into my workflows, even if it's just at a low weight, because it allows me to use some of those handmade at, uh, handmade textures that I made before and bring them into this, which I think is really cool. Uh, so it adds a little bit of me into what is otherwise a computer generated image. And of course, I want to take this and play with it further. So I think this is really great. And I'd love to see what you guys are going to do with it. Uh, so post in the comments below and let me know what you think. Again, thank you everybody for supporting this channel. You guys are fantastic. And again, we couldn't do it without you. Uh, so I really appreciate it. And because of that, this graph will be available in the community area uh, for the sponsor level and greater. Uh, so thank you once again for you guys for helping me out. Take care. Stay safe and I'll catch you all next time.